What is up, everybody? Happy, uh, what's the day today? Gosh, I don't even know. 21st? 22nd? I think it's the 21st. Anyways, it is Monday. Yes, it's the 21st. It's Martin Luther King Day. First of all, happy Martin Luther King Day to everybody out there who celebrates it. Like you federal employees, it doesn't really matter. You're not getting paid anyways. <laughs> okay, sorry. Too soon, right? Um, my name is Eddie, and I wanted to tell you guys that I have an update regarding my Ford Fusion uh, Sport Lemon Law buyback. So as you can tell, I'm not in a car right now. I'm actually not at home. I'm in Texas. Um, I have never been to Texas, and, uh, you know... I was like, I'm gonna buy a cowboy hat and be Texan. This is like the only thing I have that's not a baseball hat. And I don't think that this necessarily classifies as Texan, unfortunately. Maybe I'll stop at a gas station and do that. Uh, anyways, I'm down here for work and uh, Texas has been pretty cool to me. Uh, I flew in this morning and I had some phenomenal news. Uh, as soon as I landed, I got a phone call from Ford, from Lauren, she's the VP of West Coast of Customer Care. And basically, Lauren, she wanted to make sure that my repairs were done to my satisfaction. Now, interesting thing about it is, none of you know this yet, but I did, in fact, pick my car up last Friday from Ford uh, after they had it an additional 16 days. And, um, you know, so it brings the total length of time to 45 days that Ford has had my car for motor problems. And I picked it up and I returned my rent car and I went into Folsom Lake Ford. And you know, I returned the rent a car, I went to my uh, sales lady or my service lady and she came back and she said, hey, your car is ready to go, here's your keys, have a great day. And I went out, started my car and I was like, oh my God, this thing is so sick. You know, it sounds good, it's in the bay, so it's like, you know, <clears throat> it's in the car overhang, so it sounds great. And I noticed the car was uh, stuttering a little bit. Now, the problem is when you have exhaust on your car, you hear everything. You hear every valve tick, you hear every little stutter, you hear everything that your car does, which is a good thing and a bad thing. Um, unfortunately, it was going like that. You want me to do that again? And uh, so that's what it was doing. And I got in and it threw a check engine light. And I turned right around and I went back into Bridget. Now, it puts her in a weird scenario. Okay, it's 5.30, her techs have gone home for the day, the rental car people have gone home for a day, and here I am with my car that was supposed to be fixed and lo and behold, it's still broken. Luckily, she was able to get a hold of the foreman. He was still on the lot. He came over with his IDS tool, basically a fancy scan tool, threw it on the system and said, I gotta take it in the back. So he took it in the back, 30 minutes later he comes back and uh, there was some hose that wasn't plugged in that was causing some kind of evap leak or something. Um, so anyways, he cleared the code, it was running fine, no problem. So I drove it home, everything's good, and I've been driving the car for, I don't know, I probably put about 100 miles on it so far. It was good. Some, uh, I did break it in, okay, for all you people out there, I drove it very, very, very gently for about 85 miles. Uh, and then, I don't wanna say I drove it hard, I drove it spiritedly, you know, nothing crazy. Um, just getting on the freeway and stuff, getting up to speed, you know, nothing like testing it or anything like that. Because look, I don't want it to break again. <laughs> I know it's gonna be covered under warranty. I'm not worried about that, but it's such a pain in my ass to like have to drop it off at Ford and deal with like the Ford people at the dealership and then deal with um, Ford corporate and like the Lemon Law thing. I hope that by making these videos, I'm educating somebody because the way that I did it, I think was the best. So, like I said, go back and watch my videos on how I did it, but long story short, I got a phone call today from Ford, from uh, Lorna, and she told me, congratulations, Ford has approved your buyback. Yes! Yes! Ford has approved my buyback! Uh, 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 uh. Okay, so here's how I did it. I did it. no lawyer, no lawyer, no nothing. It's just, I used the law to how the law was written and I asked Ford and I was I was cordial, I was polite. You know, I didn't yell and bitch and complain. I just told her straight up, you know, I was I don't feel safe in this car that I paid a bunch of money for. I don't. It's not reliable. There's no reason I should be on two major motor valve malfunctions in four months. There's no reason. So basically they're gonna give me a couple options on what I can do. The first one is a buyback. 
So the way that a buyback works, and keep in mind that I'm not a lawyer, so and this all depends on your specific situation, but the way that a buyback works is they take the amount of money that you paid for the car MSRP, okay? What you paid for the car, not what I paid for the car. Uh, I'm sorry, not what they asked for the car, what I paid for it. So MSRP on my car is 30, 37 grand, okay? It's like 36,999. Well, there was like seven grand worth of rebates, Plus, I had employee D plan on it. Because remember, my brother-in-law was a Ford technician who told me not to buy 270 EcoBoost. For what it's worth, yes, he told me, and he was right. But anyways, uh, so they take what I paid for it, and they give me that. So, like, I don't know. I, I'm not near my house, so I can't look at my vehicle contract. But, like, let's say I paid 25 grand for the car. Well, the problem is, is I rolled negative equity from another car to this one, so I owe like 36 grand. Well, if they give me 25, I need to come bring to the table $11,000 to make it wash, and then the car goes away, okay? Um, and I don't have 11 grand to do that, unfortunately. Uh, I wish I did, but I don't. So it puts me in a scenario where I wanna stay with Ford. I feel like Ford, you know, I was upset with them, and I feel like they, they did me a solid. You know, they stood up and they did me a solid. And um, I, I like I like Fords. I like the Mustang. You know, I like my Fusion. I like the RS. Um, I like the show. I like their F-150s. I think they're badass vehicles, you know. I just don't think that the EcoBoost are reliable, unfortunately. Um, even the foreman who came out to my car goes, every other company can get a turbocharged, direct-injected car to work except Ford. Um, I just personally think that they're trying to pull too many horsepower out of their motors. I really do. Other cars, they do it consecutive or conservatively. Like, you know, uh, VW has like a 2.0 uh, four-cylinder that pushes like 260 horsepower. Like, that's nothing, nothing hardcore, you know, when the... 2.0 EcoBoost or 2.3 liter EcoBoost that's in the Mustang makes 310 and the 2.4 liter EcoBoost that's in the RS makes 350. So like it's not even fair unfortunately because I just think they're just trying to push their cars too hard is the problem. So second option that I actually have is um, I can agree to some sort of a good faith payment. Basically what this means is that Ford gives me a chunk of money and I keep my car. Uh, the car is fixed, which is good, and um, I could probably get a warranty from Ford, my extended warranty that I want, and then they give me lump sum of money. Here you go. Uh, it's not necessarily what I want. Uh, I don't feel safe in the car. I truly don't. I'm not just saying that. I just don't feel like the car would be a good opportunity for me to keep. Um, the other option is is to find a car at MSRP, so at 37000 Basically what they do is I owe 37 on my car, they come in, they pay off the 37, that loan, that car goes away under the impression that I buy another car 37 grand or higher. Okay, so effectively I'm looking for a cool car that I like for 37 grand. Now Ford doesn't have that many options, they really don't. Um, the Ford Show, at, now this is before rebates, okay, so you can't count rebates into this. It has to be MSRP for MSRP. So 37 grand for 37 grand. So for instance, I went to the Ford show with the 3.5 EcoBoost all-wheel drive. And I was like, well, here's a motor that might be a little bit more time tested. We'll see what we can figure out with it. Well, a freaking show is $50,000 and I'm not paying $50,000. That's insane. That's like used Hellcat prices, you know? That's, I, I mean, <laughs> 50 grand, that's like, Subaru S209 prices, you know, that's crazy. I could buy a, buy a Corvette for $50,000. Like, I don't, I'm not trying to buy a, a Taurus, unfortunately. Um, the other option was another Fusion, and I can get another Fusion Sport, and the new Fusion Sports are cool. They come with black interior, ching. They come with a new rear balance, cha-ching, which is cool. The problem with it is, is finding one. Um, Ford is ramping down the production of their vehicles, of uh, their cars specifically, so trying to find one um, is difficult, not to mention the MSRP on the 19s have went up. So now they're like 40 G's, and I'm not trying to get a bigger payment here out of the whole thing, not at all. Um, the other option is I could get like a truck, but for $37,000, the F-150s you buy are crap. You could buy like a non-turbo two-wheel drive quad cab. Like, non-turbo, 
uh, non four wheel drive, you know, and it's probably like a base model. There's probably nothing even special with it. Now, I did have a ton of fun with the 4x4 F150. I wish I could have made a review video of it um, because I drove that thing and I utilized the 4x4 and it was a lot of fun. You know, that, that truck was really fun. Um, and I appreciate Ford for letting me have that thing and, and drive it because it was, it was great. Um, it towed well, it hauled a motorcycle for me. You know, I uh, ran it through a little bit of mud. Um, it was a lot of fun. So it leads me to a few cars, you know. Um, some people are telling me to go get the Edge ST. It's the new SUV sport, basically. It's the Fusion Sport in an SUV. So it's all-wheel drive and it's 2.7 twin turbo. Um, the problem is $47,000. That's insane. So expensive. Like, it is so expensive. And the problem is you're paying for all the tech, all the tech that I don't necessarily want. I don't want navigation. I don't want a heated steering wheel. I don't want a sunroof. Like, I don't. Like, if I get a performance car like that, I want it stripped down so that it's fast. That's what I want. Pure driving enjoyment. Not it through a slush box. Like, it's just not anything good. Um, I looked at some of the other cars, like the Ford Flex, and I think the Flex is just looking dated at this point. I think it came out in like 2008, so it's 10 years old without a major refresh. Um, the only motor it comes with is a 3.5 EcoBoost, and it comes with a non-turbo 3.5, which is garbage. Ford's already replaced that motor. I don't even know why they're still putting it in the car. They should put the new 3.3 in it. Um, and you know, it doesn't do anything for me. It's like a minivan. It is, it's like a minivan. Now I have to preface this by saying my wife has a Dodge Durango, so we have an SUV, okay, for the kids. I have a nine-year-old and I have a seven-year-old, so I gotta be able to get them in the back seat. I live in California, so uh, my nine-year-old is out of car seat, and my soon-to-be seven-year-old is about to be out of a booster. So, so that leaves me with only a couple of Ford cars left, and frankly, I'm thinking about getting a Mustang. <clears throat> I really am. Uh, I had an 06 Mustang, one of the S197s that had the 4.6 in it. It was a great car. I mean, it was fun to drive. I love driving. I drove it um, two, three hours, you know, a couple places. Just the build quality wasn't that good. You know, I bought it used. Uh, I probably had 70,000 miles on it when I bought it. Um, and, you know, I really liked that car. But at that time in my life, I had kids who had big car seats. And the big car seats did not work in the Mustang. It didn't. Um, I like to think it did, but it just, it just didn't. Plus gas mileage for me, it was really painful at that point because I wasn't making decent money. So, and the car wasn't fast. Like if you're gonna have a car that gets 12 miles to the gallon, your car better have 450 horsepower. Like not 280 horsepower and get 12 miles to the gallon because then you're not racing anybody to be fast. You're just driving to be loud in this inefficient motor, <laughs> you know? Um, so I traded that in, but a new Mustang. My, qu my, my qualm here is that I don't know if I can fit the wife and my kids in the Mustang. Now, it's not like we're going anywhere far in the Mustang. I'm taking the kids to school in the morning. It's basically just me. Like 90% of the time, if we drive somewhere as a family, we take the Durango because it's just better. You know, it's comfortable. It's the Citadel. It has every option. It's just super nice. But for me, specifically, I want a driver's car. And to me, that's a six-speed 5.0 Mustang. Now, I did look into the EcoBoost, okay, I did. Um, Four-cylinder, turbocharged, six-speed, and it's got 310 horsepower, which means it's probably faster than that other one that I had, but it's an EcoBoost. And once again, reliability issues with the turbo. And that's where my, my, uh, my feed with Ford is, or my beef with Ford, is that I don't, necessarily want to deal with that again so naturally aspirated is probably the way for me to go that's what I'm thinking the good news is I can get one for about thirty seven thousand dollars which is right there um, and they're easy to find you know I can get a Ford with a performance pack for 38 grand um, now I know that's a ton of money um, I do don't get it twisted but remember I'm already paying that for my sport so like I said, for what it's worth, this is the resolution of it. So now that I have an idea of what I'm probably gonna do, um, I need to wait five days again. It was five days for the Lemon Law thing, five days for this. It's the RAV team. 
RAV stands for Reacquired Vehicles, okay? And Ford has a department that reaches out to you and they basically need certain things from you. They need your registration out of the car, they need your DMV long form, they need a uh, authorization from your lender that basically says, hey, um, you authorize Ford to pay off your car. And uh, yeah, so I should be hearing from them in about four or five days. So we'll see, fingers crossed. Until then, I'm gonna be in Dallas for the next week. So I won't even be putting any miles on my car. That is unless my wife drives it. Um, if she does happen to drive while I'm gone, I pray to God that it doesn't break. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so thanks everybody for going along with me through the ride. I know that the videos have been kind of redundant, monotonous and stuff, but I, I really appreciate everybody's feedback. You know, I've been able to get great feedback from everybody about what I should do and hopefully trying to help people, you know, and if you, if you think you have a lemon law um, or something like that um, and you have questions, reach out to me. I, I mean, you can find me on Facebook, uh, Eddie Cook in Sacramento, it's pretty easy. Um, you can find me, you can hit me up through YouTube. Um, I will do whatever I can to help you because like I said, it's, it's something I want to, I want to definitely help with. You know, if you just want some advice, um, now remember disclaimer, it's not legal advice. Okay. It's just what I would do in a sp particular situation because like I said, um, I think I had a great time with the dealers and I think I had a good time, a good outcome with Ford and hopefully everything will be fine. So I will make another YouTube video once I get contact from the RAV unit and I will give you guys more details on that. Until then, subscribe for more, of course. Um, that way you know when my videos come up. If you click the bell, it should pop up every time I have a new video, which is good. And I try not to make my videos long, just so it's long because there's a lot of information. It's been like two weeks since I made my last video. So for what it's worth. Um, and then, uh, you know, drop a comment as far as what you think I should maybe go for. You know, if, you, if you're like, man, I have a Ford, and I love my Eco Sport or something, um, drop it at the down in the likes, you know? Let me know what you think. Thanks to everybody for going along for the ride, and I will catch you guys later.